telling today. Um, I was quite impressed by this um, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. It's this uh, like a new examination of the moral economy um, which is titled Mexico Avanza Imparable Hacia Una Econima Economia Moral which means Mexico is advancing unstoppable towards an, an uh, e new or a, towards a economy, uh, moral economy. <laughs> okay, so anyway, moral economy, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> and uh, this is Mr. Wilmer Dominguez Remar. He is in Barcelona, Spain, and uh, he uh, has quite an interesting story as to how he uh, became involved in uh, uh, topics that have to do with AMLO and uh, it has to do basically with this which he is discussing today. It's something he's been studying for years as you will hear when I translate but it's very important I think for humanity. It's an important way of looking at um, uh, how how uh, economy works and uh, right now so you can see so this is what I added um, okay so without further ado I'm going to go ahead and start translating Wilmer uh, Remar's um, uh, introduction of uh, the moral economy and what it means okay here we go I'm going to start it so hello my dear friends Today it's uh, the uh, 8th of August, it was yesterday. So today I'm going to title my, uh, uh, it's what my new moral economy. Oh wow, what is that? <laughs> oh. It has to do with political economy that are being un uh, happening in Mexico. But it's important to know, my dear friends, that what the president of Mexico is putting into practice, in theory, and it's uh, theoretical, um, it's something, um, here we're going to ask help from a few friends that are very interesting. So we're starting with Max Diff. He's an economist from uh, Chile. And look at what he said on the 25th uh, uh, of uh, December on 25th. And there is no uh, accused. So he says that the, that it, that the neoliberal, okay, so I'm gonna pause this for a second. So what he's saying here is that the, um, this is the Chilean uh, man uh, uh, who, is like an expert in uh, uh, economics 
and uh, he's uh, uh, says in this uh, you know where he's reading this from it's uh, uh, El Strador or El Strador um, but anyway um, okay so I'm trying to make sure this all um, is all in there so you could see the whole thing so give me a second I'm transitioning again okay um, so anyway um, this is uh, where he's um, where he's um, talking about that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go back and start it so I'm gonna go back just a little bit because I want you to hear when he ex uh, explains who this guy is okay so we're gonna go right back to here so he says I'm asking for help from a couple of friends that are very interesting so Max Neef he's an economist from Chile and look at what he said in tw uh, 2015. Uh, the, okay, so he says the uh, neoliberal economy kills more people than all the armies in the world combined. And there is no one that is accused and no one that is in prison over it. Whoa! <laughs> okay, that was a little fupa. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna go back there again. So no one's in prison. This is very strong. What he says, he's saying that that in those countries. Where they have implemented the neoliberal economical system, there more people die due to the very system than due to organized crime. Can you imagine that? Um, when I read that, I was wow <laughs> mystified <laughs> well i knew it was a problem but i didn't realize that it was actually responsible so, for so many of the deaths i knew they were responsible for the poverty but i didn't it hadn't come into my head that there's a lot of death related to the neoliberal system which is the same uh, system that was in mexico uh, that uh, AMLO, as he said in the conference this morning, has been uprooting. He's trying to tear it out from the roots, and it's been difficult because there's a lot of opposition. All those people that were getting money, that were getting rich uh, off of uh, people's suffering, uh, they're not liking it. They're, they're having a hard time with it, and uh, they, they, they're fighting it, and they're making it difficult. They, they don't pull any stops. At every opportunity, they try to uh, make uh, you know difficulty for the for the government and for AMLO. Uh, uh, you know wherever he tries to help the people, um, they will block it. Uh, they'll put uh, stays, um, uh, stops. You know like like they'll stop the works because they start complaining of well, I don't know the environment or something. You know something that has already been addressed but they'll just put a new uh, stumbling block because they do not want the uh, fourth transformation to take place and the fourth transformation basically just uh, nullifies the neoliberal uh, system so that's what they're trying to fight and that's why they're against AMLO but in any case this was very enlightening to me and I thought you know I really do need to share it with people. Um, there's so many great uh, videos out there. Uh, people are doing a great job of disseminating this, but there's not anybody that's doing it in English. And I know that the English speaking people also are dealing with this uh, situation of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. And that's what it's about. It's That's what the neoliberal system is about, but you'll find out further, so I'll go ahead and start again. So, he said, 
Nobody's being it's judged. Not. Nobody's be, nobody's investigating. Well, nobody's well, going to well, prison. So now they think they now they're saying this is craziness. It's wild thinking. Uh, but when they started looking at Hitler, they said, "No, that's wild thinking. That's monstrous. That wouldn't happen." But they didn't realize till it was too late. Don't wait till that happens to us, because it's already happening, isn't it? At least Mexico has started liberating itself from that matter, and maybe perhaps due to their wonderful example, we can help stop that. Okay, now here, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop it there because he's basically reading what's in here. And I'm going to go ahead and read it and translate as I go because he speaks a little fast and it's. Ra I think I'd rather just read it uh, and translate. So, continuing to force the growth to consume more and to continue producing an infinite quantity of things that are unnecessary, generating these institutions that are more powerful in the world. How, um, uh, like publicity, uh, whose function is to, um, is very clear. It's to buy that which we do not need uh, with money that we do not have, to impress people that we do not know. This inevitably will not be sustainable. This is what the economist and author of this uh, thesis uh, said reg regarding destroying the scale of uh, humanity. So I've just translated that publicity. Yeah, buying what you don't need with money that you do not have and getting in debt to impress those that you do not know that evidently could not be sustainable so my dear friend that's on one hand but like I mentioned in the initiation of this uh, video today and I wanted to talk about where this comes from because this is fundamental where does it emanate from so let's go to this man, so Luis Espiga. Luis Espiga is an engineer of uh, informational industry who has worked with many international uh, marketing companies. He's got 28 years of experience in the industry, and he's consultant of strategy uh, for companies, large government companies, and he directs a, a global consultation, formers, all, um, attorneys. Okay, so let me pause that for a second because I want to tell you what that just said. Oh my gosh, it didn't stop. <laughs> okay, I meant to pause it right there. Okay, so it says, what does he do directly? Okay, so it's it's where I, he was saying attorneys, psychologists, mediators, family uh, workers, experts and de uh, dealing with labor uh, matters, etc. Uh, he's a professional uh, with a solid reputation and ample experience in work with clients in Spain and multinational of diverse sectors of the industry and uh, service industry. Okay, so that was that. He is the director and founder of the Triform Industry. What is Triform Industry? 
or institute, I'm sorry. So let's see what Espiga says regarding the uh, uh, trans tri transformation social, which is the foundation of triform industry. So if you want to understand what triform industry is, you have to understand what social transformation, social transformation, it's, it's like what Obrador is doing in his fourth transformation, even though what they don't realize is this is what they're realizing in that 4T transformation. So, so, so it's perhaps, okay. So this is, so the genesis, the origin of health, how to create organisms that are healthy, obviously. A, a fundamental aspect would be to end corruption. That's obvious. But we want to have our countries free of corruption. The most, the strongest model of uh, work for that, of our organism, is social transformation. It's inspired. This inspired formulation of Rudolf Steiner would bring the health of every uh, social organism, any social organism, community, town, any institution, a secretary of government, a company, any organization where people are joined together to work, that would be a social organism. The uh, transformation of us, it says that the health is fundamentally in that every one of the three um, spheres in which organism is um, um, developed, or the scopes, I mean the three scopes. That word ambitos means scopes, and I was confused. The uh, economic scope, the uh, jur Okay, so let's pause it there for a second, because I want to um, actually bring this to light a little here. Um, I want to, um, oops, excuse me for just a second. I'm gonna enlarge this for you to see up close, okay? Um, it'll take just a second, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And this is his deal here. I'm gonna enlarge this for you to see. Um, we'll call this um, uh, try, try uh, transform trans, okay. And so that's gonna be in here, save. And I'm gonna add that to our um, slideshow. So give me just a moment, because I really want you to see um, uh, what it is that, um, let's see, here's our slideshow. And I'm going to add to that, there it is. Um, Okay, so I'm adding this one to it. Give me just a moment, because I've got I've got a few slides here I want you to see, but it's I think this one is also very important. Okay, so give me a second here. Um, this is the one we just did. This one. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, push push this here. So make it manual. Okay, and then. Uh, So now I'm going to go ahead and go to that uh, slide there, and let's see. Slideshow. Okay, come on now. All right, if I could get it to stop. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, 
Well, I'll just put this over here. That's what I'll do. Then you can see it real big. Okay, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Hold on here. See if it'll let me. Okay, there we go. Now you can see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, restart that video if I can with this in front of it. Okay, there it is. Okay, so let's see. Give me just a moment. I have to get to that button. <laughs> now the other one hid behind it. Arr, these are the irritating things of computers, right? Oh, my word. It's hidden behind the other one. <sighs> okay. And <laughs> so either one or the other, right? Okay. So here. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and pause it again. So you can see... So I'm going to pause this for a second. Okay, so these are the three spheres. And he, uh, this is economic, judicial or political, and then the cultural. Uh, these are the three scopes and then the individuals in the middle. And you can see on the outside it says fraternity, equality, and what's the liberty is the other one. So these are the scopes that uh, Luis Espiga uh, developed. And um, that was what I wanted you guys to see up close. And that's what he's discussing right now. So my word, my whole thing disappeared. Lordy, lordy. Okay. Everything disappeared on me. <laughs> okay. So now, um, so you can see that uh, obviously any government that would need to have these three spheres but they're the same for the whole world no matter what country in the world in any human society that is configured that's this the sphere that's productive for work and services where you work the judicial, um, but it's not the pr product of goods and services for riches. What the one that rich is, it's the strategy of law, legislation, politics. And obviously the people work in this sphere, but it's not to generate money. They are not there to generate riches. It's the sphere that creates laws that establishes the norms for legislating, for politics. And the last thing is the cultural, the thinking, free expression, publications, the sphere of the universities, of studying schools, religions, and the different uh, religious areas, everything with a religious um, music, etc. So now we have three great spheres, my friends, that are very important that we have to understand clearly. The pro, um, federal um, productive and the cultural economic justice so let's continue so Luis Espiga says the following the three ways that they move is to obey its own laws and that they not interfere, interfere with the activity of the other two. So each one has its own laws and they cannot interfere. They cannot interfere with each other. And that's why the president of Mexico al always refers to the uh, separation of powers. They should not interfere or impose one over the other. In the countries where they actually uh, govern the um, 
like Spain, Alemán, uh, German, France. So in the uh, neoliberal period, there you have the psychological uh, powers. They're the ones who uh, pu put and remove uh, presidents from their position. They try to make us think that there's a democracy, but the reality is no. No, it's plutocracy. That's money, the economy of money. Now, this, this is the one where I'm trying to find my slideshow to show you, but I do want to get to that. Hold on. My slideshow is, oh, here it is. Uh, left, this one. Okay. There's one place where I can move them forward and back. Hold on. There is a... Mm. Oh, here it is. Uh, capture title. Show. Where's the one for next? <laughs> Left. Uh, I always um, remove these because <laughs> I ha sometimes I accidentally I'm trying to set up the hotkey um, because when I. <laughs> When I accidentally uh, hit the hotkeys sometimes, um, I, I start the, the, oh, there it is. Okay, so we're going to do this and this. There we go. Because I had accidentally removed the uh, slideshow um, controls. Okay, so here is the uh, slideshow, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so let's go to the slideshow. Okay, so we got to go. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so now we're going to the slideshow. Now, this is where he's talking about um, the three spheres of economy. Fraternity, a group... Okay, now I looked up the, the words, um, and this is what um, I found the, um, the meaning of the words. And I looked them up in the dictionary, uh, at dictionary, and I wanted to show you what the actual translation of the words are, is in the dictionary. Okay, it says... Uh, Fraternity, a group of people sharing a common profession or interest. Members of, say, for example, the hunting fraternity. And synonyms are like a profession, body of workers, okay? So that's the fraternity. Political is a group of people sharing a common profession or interest. Members of, say, the hunting fraternity. And cultural relating to ideas, customs, and social behavior of a society, the cultural diversity of the world's peoples, synonyms, ethnic, racial, folk, or uh, more relating to the arts and to the intellectual achievements like a cultural festival. Okay, next. Let's see if it is going to behave. Okay, so it does not want to behave. I thought I set the parameters, but apparently it is not behaving. So, um, let me see if I can go to the next one. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and go and let him talk on the, um, the rest of this, okay? And... Here we go. So he says that the transformation has to do with a group of people interacts together. Like it could be a college, a company, a football, a, a, a country, a state, a nation. It's good for anybody. It's it's good or it can be a, applied to the smallest to the largest to find as they finalized the war uh, uh, Rudolf Steiner the creator of the founder or of this the first one that started talking about these matters he says that he speaks in depth regarding the possibility of uh, realizing it in three uh, spheres that are autonomous. 
And so in, 20, in 1919, he was already talking about these concepts to organizing these spheres in culture, um, economic, and politics. They all have to be separate. They should not interfere with one or the other. Neither, neither can one obligate the other one to do anything. It's a human uh, sovereignty with that are able to work within themselves. Due to the action of the human sovereign, so what is the in a uh, human uh, individual sovereign? An individual sovereign human is a human that gov governs himself. Like the president of AMLO, he's an individual sovereign. He does not allow the by to be moved by the paraphil from the paraphernalia of appearances or in appearances. He's above that. And with him, many of the people are going in that line. And the president doesn't let power or for or to put himself or obligate or to put the judicial power. No. He respects the other powers. He respects He's a profoundly works on himself. He's well-rounded, a sovereign for himself. And that is what he's teaching us every day. Estimated Mexican people, beloved Peruvian brothers, beloved Latin American people in this world, if we cannot conquer ourselves as sovereigns over our own passions, and our ideas, their fears. We cannot be sovereign, sovereigns over ourselves. And if we are not auto-sovereigns, we will not be able to comply with our duty that we were sent to the earth to do. Only sovereign people on their own can act with love and liberty, can develop big things and be in their place to, and not to be obligated for nothing or anybody that's unjust. Thanks to the action of the individual uh, that is in touch with the three spheres, the fraternity that has to be in the economical area and the cultural and equality that has to be our aspect, cultural and ju ju um, judicial and politic. Nobody, uh, like the president says, nobody over the law, nobody outside the law. That is equality in the judicial area. Also, he says that we should, we have be capable of reconciling the three different logics each sphere of the actual person has its own logic. The sphere of economic has its own logic. And the sphere of economic, the cultural, all have their own way. And they have to act harmoniously, but they have to have their own individual uh, controls. Stainer presented a, an image that responded of a change that was long sought and also is a reflection of the human himself that's triformed. Here's a lot of things to be developed, but we can't deal with it all today. But it's a day-to-day -day program that's just, it would take a long time just to do that. But you can look information regarding this. This image, that is, this is to say the human that's self-formed, that's in this triform. The, you know, the social and the uh, cultural and po political in this critical uh, moment after World War One, and the country was rebuilding itself. But since they did not pay attention, those bureaucrats of that time, 
because he tried to show them this and parliament, uh, the German parliament did not listen to him. And that when they wound up having the Second World War. Please, friends, let's not wait for a Third World War. The proposal by Rudolf Steinem that is also being done by the president of Mexico, AMLO, it has to be expand through the whole world and it has to be it has to be successful. Like in the like he's saying to his his friend in Peru, think about it, get over it. That he says let's stop doing these left and right fights. No. That's already been that's already been lost before they even started the fight. So his he says that the the clear aspect of the um, question of um, so let's see this is the uh, aspect that's uh, uh, regarding the uh, social okay so here's a very interesting so this is the book with the original title the aspect that is clear from uh, is nature. It's a social uh, government. Not like a scheme or a political scheme. It's a fundamental. Because like if they had the program of Morena, no, it's not that. What I am explaining to you is that it's beyond that, behind, beyond those programs. That's something that is has nothing to do with it's got to do with society that has to do with the fourth transformation there will be other impulses that are political but up here what i am telling you is not going to ever go out of style the 4t will pass and it will be history in its own moment let's wait and hope that it will be a story of triumph and what I am referring to, it's infinitely bigger. It transcends all these if, um, initiatives and political with all the respect that they deserve. Mr. President, Mr. Mexico, it's not something temporary. Yes, my friends, my brothers. So let's, let's look at it given importance what he's doing. It's so it's, it's an observable reality. It's not just the scheme that's political. It's got an, a focus that's um, phenomenon. Like you used to so they were trying to prohibit, but they need here. There is a universe entirely. I am studying this for 20 years and I cannot finish it. I am just starting to scratch the surface. It's impressionable. It's quite interesting. I am telling you the truth. Okay. So let's leave it here and let's, so here's the page of Triformantis Institute so you could see the, uh, the, uh, the URL so you could go there. So he wants to also talk about another thing re regarding artificial intelligence because it's already here. For example, that that you can give them money directly via card. That means artificial intelligence. So therefore, regarding artificial, what does that mean? Uh, or what does he speak regarding that uh, in the Triformans? Our mission is to inform society over what it means to do uh, on the platform of regarding uh, artificial 
uh, intelligent. I know that you feel that the majority of us do not had not planned or understand what it means to be in a human in this world. You just conform yourselves with living. The most of the people that come to this channel are people that are profoundly human. I deduce it by their comments. And in that sense, I congratulate myself. But it's not sufficient. It is necessary to reflect what it means to be a human in this time, era. To inspire is what they desire. That's the vision. Inspire humans to n nurture their authentic humanity in whatever job they do. This a beautiful job that he has. We want to make a platform that can put an emphasis on all the dimensions of a human by re uh, collecting uh, existing articles, books, events relating to the human and to invite people to public with you and share your documents to document work so that it needs to be throughout the whole world and to publish your own articles. Investigate whether regarding the possibilities of the human potential and development in the latest technical and radical and in artificial intelligence. Utilize the results of this investigation for different levels of groups and webs that they will bring uh, actions regarding authentic humanity and intelli artificial intelligence. One of the fundamental matters to create webs that is on a level, a worldwide level that will, will help to spread this around the world. And I'm going to try to get an interview with him to ask him lots of questions. And whatever you questions you send me, make them and I will be glad to ask him. I will let make them get to him and I I hope that he will take you know the time to attend us like uh, Jalife and or Herreros they both gave us an interview. So I want to say a uh, friend Luis Espiga and a, a very strong uh, hug and I congratulate you and very well. I would like to talk briefly, you know MX, uh, he was speaking of something fundamental. He was hoping on a transformation of Mexico. Something about Peña Nieto. I can hardly hear it. That there's a lot of. So they made this one lady uh, take, push her out of this uh, job, fire her. She had to form her own um, image with the digital image. To sustain um, newspaper people, media people. Connection MX. I have a lot of admiration and respect for them. I, I given him a, a invitation to come work with us, but he has an answer. But uh, I hope that he does it one of these days. But I liked very much this program because here it talks about who's behind these newspaper people. God is Carmen Aristenen. When she was close to the 4T, because she was unearthing all the corruption of Peña Nieto and, and all those guys. But all of a sudden, she published a few days ago regarding uh, uh, against 
um, Andres Manuel. So then she she was defending this guy from Reforma who was slim and he's behind her. But if you want to see the whole, um, yeah, go check out Conexión MX to see that. And I don't want to stop uh, visiting uh, Facebook of uh, Andres Manuel López Obrador. On the 6th of August, he published this image where he he had a conversation with uh, John F. Waldron, president of the director of Walman, uh, Goldman Sachs. And they started, they expressed their confidence in Mexico. And Goldman Sachs is like next to the Rothschilds and they're the basically the owners of the world, BlackRock, etc. And when they, when these groups that are so strong recognize and give their support to the president of Mexico, this is something major because we're before, before a president that is not communist because if he was, these people would not be supporting him. He's demonstrating that these groups of power, if they wish to do work, they're going to have to respect the conditions that Mexico places. And that is very fundamental. My friends and my Argentine, if you want to get into politics, because you're already in politics, one politician that does not aspire to do what AMLO is doing in Mexico, he shouldn't even present himself. He should not aspire, if he does not aspire to develop the country, to take out, to unearth and, and de unroot that neoliberal thing, he does not belong. And the people will not accept candidates of this time. The only people that are gonna be supported will be the ones that act like the president of Mexico that makes very clear the rules of investment in the country of, for foreign countries. You understand? So very good, my dear friends. What, what else do we have regarding the president, uh, Luis Man, Andres Manuel? He met with a padres, a friend of his, Padre Scandalinde, his friend and uh, companion with the, uh, uh, the Equality, Fraternity, and Justice. I'm, he says he doesn't know who he is, but I can't talk about him because he doesn't know much about him. But I just opened the page and saw that he was there with him. But surely he is a, a man that is uh, worthy of that post. And also, here you see a picture of Ricardo Aruet Guardaul. Who is he? In one of the most contaminated areas of the government that had corruption, the administration general of uh, um, Aduanas, or the, what is that thing where you, I can't think of the word, but it means like where you, uh, uh, general administration of um, where you customs <laughs> he's in charge of customs we hope this man is not a traitor because that's what we cannot we do not want <laughs> Rafael Correa also had a vice president in this case uh, Moreno that solicited confidence and he turned out to be a traitor the instruction that was received from him for Mexico that he uh, remove uh, corruption and not to permit influentialism. That's what he requires from him, to remove corruption. Let's see what else we have here. Here, the platform. Oh, and that was where they, so now, so this was the whistleblowers program that he instituted. They're cleaning the government from the top down. 
and making it a way of life. So, so also that they, they did not try to, because they tried to stop the sale of the house. <laughs> They're trying to let justice, you know, the judicial department is allowing themselves to be used by them. And we be giving grants to the sports uh, people in, in the uh, uh, Pan American Games. And they will continue to give the money to just causes. Excellent. If you want to see the Mañaneras, you can go see it. You can see it there. But we will visit briefly as a uh, report. Oh, yes. This is where you can report, uh, you know, crimes. It's a whistleblower. It's a platform from the Secretary of uh, a Function, a Public Function. It's a public service to alert on uh, acts of grave corruption, violations of human rights, punishment and uh, 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 sexual assault, in which there are federal and public servants. So then you would send the alert. Of course, we're not gonna send an alert, but this is how you would do it. So you could see how it's done, how it works. So we're going to find this page, and you are an alerter, and then you would say, give you, put in your alert, and there you put the matter in, you describe it, you just write briefly what it's about, and what you think is a act of corruption or a violation of rights, some kind of crime, anything, whatever it is. Even and you could add pictures, uh, videos, anything, and then you send it, and that's it. Wow, it's real simple. And they put the apparatus into shape to, to weed out all these corrupt individuals. So we'll leave it right there. So now we're going to continue in contact, and if you like his channel, which is NT News, Wilmer, uh, you know, uh, Wilmer Dominguez Ramar. And so he's very happy with Luis Espiga and he wants to have an interview with him. And he says, let's go forward with the 4T. Awesome. That was awesome. So let me get out of here. <laughs> so we want to stop it. Okay, anyway, so I just thought um, that you guys would... Um, I just threw something on there or anything. Uh, this this is one of the uh, slides. This is where I looked up democracy. Now, he said that, you know, we've been sold a bill of goods where they told us this is a democracy. And look, at this is what a democracy is. And this is what we actually got. Okay, so this is the bill of goods we were sold. Democracy, noun. Okay, uh, a system of government by the whole population or all the eligible members of a state, typically through an elective, elected or elected representatives. Capitalism and democracy are ascendant in the third world. Synonyms, uh, representative government, elective government, constitutional government, popular government, and there's more. Antonyms, or the opposite of that would be tyranny and dictatorship. A state of government by a democracy uh, is how it would be used. Plural noun, de democracies, um, you know, and so forth. And then control of an organization or group by the majority of its members. The intended extension of industrial democracy, the, the practice of principles of social equality, demands for greater democracy. These are just uses of it. Okay, so this is what we actually got. Okay, so this is what we're supposed to, we were said we were gonna get <laughs> with our governments. And this is what we actually got in uh, the US and all these neoliberal places. Okay, so plut plutocracy. It means a government by the wealthy. The attack on the ba uh, Bank of England was a great gesture against the very symbol of plut uh, Pluto. 
plutocracy, <laughs> a country or society governed by the wealthy. Plural noun, plutocracies. No one can accept public policies which turn a democracy into a plutocracy. On uh, an elite or ruling class of people whose power derives from their wealth. Officials were drawn by their new plutocracy. So as you can see, this is actually what we have. This is what's governing our country, the US, oh, the world power, the richest country in the world. Yeah, we got a lot of millionaires. We sure do. We got, we got about, I don't know, what is it, 1%, 10%, <laughs> whatever it is, it's some, a few people got all the money. <laughs> Everybody else is broke. Even the ones that make good money or money compared to uh, the poor, are having a hard time making a living with the the cost of insurance and the bill of goods they sold us with that you know they told us oh you know this new plan for insurance you know all they did was look out for for the insurance companies and the uh, pharmaceuticals they didn't look out for us our prices went up we didn't get a break uh it's just horrible it, this this was the the part of this um uh, video that got to me I was like wow that is what we have we are in this place right here and we need to get back to this place right here and we need to get to uh, what what's happening in in Mexico we need that we need corruption ruled out and yeah they're not outward outwardly uh, corrupt like you usually cannot bribe a a policeman you know to let you go and so forth and we don't try but I'm talking about the corruption where they tell us you know hey this new bill is coming and you guys are gonna get these benefits and what it turns out to be is they take away more benefits they take away more things from us they take away things from our children our schools and they're tightening up the belts of the of the poor people and their little, um, they have to loosen their belts for all the, all the money they're making. They have to loosen, loosen their jackets, <laughs> you know, <laughs> their Armani jackets. Uh, it's just, this is what we have. And I think that's the new word, a uh, word of the day. In fact, I'm going to put this on my Facebook, uh, page. Uh, I'm going to uh, put this there so you guys can see what's really going on in our country um, and we need to try and look for a um, you know he was saying at the end we the people will no longer tolerate a government that is not for the people and I think we need to actually make an effort to find an official that is not out for this plutocracy we need a, a person to go into office that is going to take care of the needs of the actual people right uh we need to find somebody like amlo and i started saying and i mean it i mean it you know when you say i wish you this and i wish you that well i wish the governments of the world if they could have someone like amlo it would make such a difference and i say we need to start looking for candidates we need to start paying attention uh, who is the one in our country, who's the candidates in our country that are actually offering to uh, make education affordable or free? Who's actually offering to uh, give us, uh, you know, uh, medical that's covered uh, or free? Th they say, oh, no, it's not possible. It can't be done. Well, that is plutocracy speaking because Mexico is doing it and they're way poorer than us. If they can give free education, if they can give free medicine, if they can give uh, a increased amount doubled uh, or practically doubled, if not doubled, I'm thinking it might've been double uh, for the elderly because you know, the people that are on uh, social security are making uh, what are usually getting around six hundred dollars a month to maybe a thousand if they're lucky if they made a lot of money You know, that's ridiculous 
that it never kept up with inflation. Inflation kept going up and they kept that down. So there's no way a lot of, um, you know, uh, American people, and I say American and that includes every nationality, people in the U.S. of A are living in such poverty that some of them have to resort to eating the ones that eat meat, I'm vegan, but the ones that eat meat resort to eating dog food, uh, animal food, because they cannot afford uh, meat. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just sad, the state that our government is in and, uh, and the fact that, that they do not care about the poor. They do not care about the elderly. They don't care about the disabled. They're, they're about making more money. And if they're going to, uh, you know, cut the budget, they're going to cut it on the, on the low end, which is us. And that's what Mexico in AMLO is teaching and doing different, is he's taking care of the needs of the pover impoverished people first. And I was um, in different parts of our city this, uh, I was in uh, Hanford, I don't live in Hanford, but I was in Hanford, I was in Bakersfield, I was in Visalia, and I saw homeless people on the streets. Um, and I saw, and I, and I, I went up to them and I said, well, isn't there a shelter? Can you go to a shelter? Is, is, cause there was a young lady, maybe 20 years old. And, and I said, well, can't you go to a shelter? Isn't there somewhere you could go? She said, yeah, there's a shelter. She says, but there's a lot of men there and I wouldn't be safe there. Um, she goes, they could attack me while I'm sleeping. I wouldn't be able to sleep. So that's just to let you know just how bad things are here. People think they're coming to the U.S. for the, you know, pot of gold or, you know, for a better way of life. But, man, sometimes I wonder if they don't have it better in, in those third world countries that are running away. Because I know that some of us feel like running away from here, but run to where? You don't even know where to go to. Because everywhere has that neoliberal thing going on, except for Mexico now, thank God. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, uh, sad, uh, situation that we find ourselves here in the U S and in the world. And I think that if we set our minds to it, we could find a, uh, we could find someone in the U S that is about the people and, I'm putting it out there. I, I think that the only one I've seen so far that's anywhere near what AMLO does is Bernie. I'm just putting it out there because I know there's other, there might be other people, but I've never been involved in politics, but I did hear about Bernie and he seems to have similar thoughts. But you know, uh, the system, the political system in the US is such that um, it's hard for them to get the electoral votes um, because that's governed by the, by the wealthy again. The wealthy people, you know, they pay, uh, what do you call those people? They go to, to the government and they convince politicians uh, that are the ones that are, give the electoral votes. They convince them to, to vote a certain way so that the official that they want to go in, the president they want to go in, uh, goes in and does the things that they paid him and agreed he's agreed to do in order to run his campaign and that's where am um uh what's his name uh, bernie bernie wasn't accepting money for campaigns or he wasn't uh i think you know he wasn't ex he was accepting money from people but not from organizations so that he wasn't jaded um, but in any case, that's just my thought on it. And I know people are going to protest, you know, oh, you know, you're a Bernie person. You know, I'm not, I'm not politically inclined, but I am for human rights. And I am for seeing the impoverished not be impoverished. And we do have a lot of American people here that are impoverished. And it's something that could easily be remedied. If they can do it in Mexico, we can do it here. They've sold us a bill of goods and told us no no, you can't do it. You can't give free education. You can't give, you know, more money to the elderly. We need to close up Social Security. What are they going to do? Make the elderly go back to work? You know, that's that's what Fox was proposing in Mexico. You know, yeah, yeah, cut, you know, instead of giving them an increase, he wanted to uh, give them uh, the opportunity to go back to work. <laughs>
Well, you know, there is another thing that's happening uh, in Mexico, uh, speaking of that. They're so short on uh, medical professionals that they're uh, hiring back the people that had retired, retired doctors and nurses, and they're allowing them to keep their pension and then as an incentive, and then they'll get to be, uh, get a job and get paid. And if they go work in the rural outskirts, they'll get paid even more than the uh, general pay. And that's the other thing. They're going to be increasing the wages for the medical personnel over there. So something good, you know, for for older nurses and, and doctors, you know, to be able to, to make a little money, you know, uh, you know, whatever they retired on or whatever they have left, you know, if they're not making it, they can always go back to work and help out the economy till they can get the new batch of students that are coming out of the colleges that are now free. But now that they'll be able to go and, and be educated and be nurses and doctors because Many of them wanted to be nurses and doctors and were stopped by the neoliberal system because um, it was they were keeping the money and they weren't putting it into education. So the the presidents and and the uh, they they sold the um, educational system to uh, private interests, and that's kind of what we got going on here. We have to pay for colleges. We have to pay for a lot of the education. Um, they've took taken away things like music and art from school they've taken away all the things that were beautiful out of our school that our children no longer get and i want it all back i want it for them i've got grandchildren i want them to have things i want them to have those beautiful things anyway that's my uh <laughs> two cents but um i just wanted to say thank you very much to wilmer for bringing us this uh, information which cleared up so much for me and I'm sure for other people and uh, please uh, subscribe to his channel he's very intelligent um, I think he works in the educational system in Barcelona Spain but he's a Peruvian man and uh, and also please like and subscribe my channel and and uh, I've got a channel called AMLO vision on YouTube and I translate um, English to Spanish and Spanish to English. In this case, I'm translating Spanish to English. But sometimes I translate English to Spanish for, for the community. So it's just about translating. And in, every now and then I put in my two cents, like in this case, because I really feel strongly that we need to do something about the situation. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe. And thank you. Thank you. Love you all. Hugs and kisses. Bye.